In this video, we're diving into Mix, Elixir's build tool, similar to Rake in Ruby or Make in C. Mix is essential for creating, compiling, testing, and managing dependencies in our Elixir projects. Let's start by setting up a new project and exploring what Mix creates for us. So we'll begin by creating a new project using Mix. Open up your terminal and CD to whatever directory you'd like. Let me make this bigger for us as well so we can see it. And I'm going to CD to my desktop. You guys can wherever you want your project. And then to create a new Elixir project, it's as easy as saying mix space and then uh, new and then the name of your project. I'm just going to call mine hello world because what is the first project or theme going to be if you don't do the, the normal programming thing of hello world, right? So there we go. I hit enter. This command sets up our new Elixir project. You'll see that it generates, you know, a bunch of directories and several important files. So let's go ahead and check those out. Um, if we open up VS Code, Uh, we can close our settings if you still have those from the last project. And then we're going to say file, uh, open folder. And mine's on the desktop, hello world. So open and let's see. Uh, yes, allow it. Yes, trust the authors. And I'm just going to make this bigger for us so you can see it. Close that welcome sign. All right, so in our hello world project, let me just expand the lib directory and the test directory. We are going to encounter two types of files for the most part. .exs files, like this hello world test, uh, they are interpreted scripts. They're not compiled into bytecode, but instead interpreted directly by Elixir at runtime. This makes .exs files ideal for small standalone tasks, scripts, or tests that need to be run on the fly without the overhead of compilation. And then you're going to see .ex files, like hello world.ex. They're compiled source files forming the backbone of our project. All right. And then the .mix.exs file, let's open that one up. And inside, you're going to see that it it basically describes our project. So you'll see our, our project name, the version of our project, the version of Elixir to run our project, and a couple other things. And then you'll see that um, depths here calls a function called depths. And if you go down here, our dependencies would be listed inside between these two square brackets. So you manage your dependencies like JSON, for example. You add a version with the, uh, the tilde arrow and then the version number. This means that this 0 0.3 would be the minimum version allowed, allowing us to update to any minor version, but not the next major version, okay? So if we wanted to just add our own we're going to add a real dependency here so opening and closing curly braces and then a dependency called json comma and i'll explain what this is in a later video but for what we're learning here it doesn't matter just know it's a dependency that we can use and then uh opening and closing quotations and then we do the tilde arrow or the greater than whatever you want to call it um, space and then 1.4. Like I said before, now this would let us install any minor versions of 1.4, so 1.4.1, 1.4.4, but it would not update to 1.5, okay? So now if we save this, we can now use, like, if we want to see a little more power of mix, right? We can do things with hex. Uh, let's see, like, so if we, let's CD into our project, which is hello world on our desktop. And then we can use hex, which is the package manager, right? We can do mix and then you do x.info and then the name of the package you're interested in. And then you see all, you see that 1.4 is the main release, 
but then you can see that they have all these other version, all these other releases available, some alpha versions, and then all of that good stuff. But the 1.4 is the stable version that you would want to use in a project. All right. So anytime that you have a dependency and you don't want to dig through GitHub or any of that, you can use mix, um, mix space hex dot info, and you can find all the information without leaving your terminal. And then to install dependencies, all we have to do is say mix depths dot git, and this will compile our project and also compile our dependency or download and compile our dependencies and all of that good stuff. So if you notice after I did that, it created a build folder for us. And it also created a depths folder, which inside is, since there's only one dependency, it opens right into the JSON library. All right. And so let's modify, let's go to hello world. Elixir emphasizes documentation. You'll notice module doc here. And you'll also notice at doc down here for the function below. So you can add descriptions for an entire module. So if we wanted to describe this entire hello world module, you could put the description or whatever you want up here. And then down below, you have, we can add a description to a function. And then you also have an example that shows argument types and response types. And we'll get more into functions in a later video, but you'll notice we have one called hello. And it returns a value colon world. And a colon before value in Elixir is called an atom. We'll also get more into these later, but for now, just know it's essentially a string, which means it's the value or word that you see. Hi, I'm Jacob. My YouTube channel and podcast reach thousands of engaged Elixir developers every month. If you're looking to promote your developer tools, services, or job opportunities to a focused audience of Elixir professionals, head to elixirmentor.com and let's discuss sponsorship options. One really cool way to access and test our project code is with Interactive Elixir Shell, also known as IEX, from the terminal. So if we go back to the terminal, um, we can actually, obviously, make sure you're in our project, and then we can actually um, start up the Elixir Shell with IEX space dash capital S mix. And now it compiles our project and built our project. And now we can call functions, view documentation, and interact with our code in real time. So let's take a look at the documentation of our Hello World module. And we can just do that with you doing H space and then the name of our module, which is Hello World. And then you'll see that Hello World, so documentation for Hello World. And let's go back to hello world here. Whoop. And you see documentation for hello world right there. And I guess I should say the module I'm talking about is this entire thing that a function is inside. And we'll get more into modules and functions in later videos. I don't want to confuse you. I'm just kind of showing you what, um, what mix is capable of doing and and now the interactive elixir shell as well so there you have it we can see the documentation for our module now let's pretend we don't know what public functions are available inside our module we can just do uh exports opening parentheses in the name of our module again hello world oh exports not export one second and then hit enter and you see hello forward slash zero. The forward slash means it has zero arguments and it's also known as the arity. But we'll get more into that later as well. But now that we know there is a public function, we can also see the documentation for that function. So we can do H and then we have to do the module name, which is hello world. And then the function, which is dot hello. So that's the name of the function and you'll see it right there, def hello, okay. And now if I hit enter, you'll see 
that we have our hello world description and then our examples. So in IEX, if we were to call this function hello world dot hello, it returns colon hello. So that's pretty cool. So now let's say we want to manually call our function to make sure it's returning what we expect. We can just type what the example says. So hello world dot hello opening closing parentheses hit enter and look at that it returns an atom world to us which is pretty awesome i think that's enough uh elixir shell for now now to exit out of this we just have to press Control c twice and now we're back to our our project directory now i want to point out is the test directory if we go over to the test directory and open up hello world test.exs, um, tests are written in exs files so the script can be run without being compiled. So this file was generated to match our hello world.ex file to test the single function that returns the atom world. Now, a few things to note here um, it uses xunit.case. Now, this is Elixir's testing framework. This gives us helpers for defining test cases. Then you'll see this doc test hello world. This is really cool, and we're going to circle right back to it, but um, just not right at this moment. And then you'll see our test. And our test looks like another function, but instead of def in front of it, you see test. And then it's followed by the description of the test. So it greets the world. And then you'll see assert. And assert is um, making sure that what we get return, like returned by our function matches what we expect it to be. So in this case, we expect our hello function to be the atom world. So now if we go back to our terminal, we can actually run our tests with mix. And all we have to do is say mix test. And it will compile and then it runs our tests. So you'll notice that it says one doc test ran and one test ran, but we only had one test. Okay, so what is this doc test? So remember our function documentation? Let's go back. Doc test actually runs the example code here. So doc test actually called the IEX, so hello world dot hello, and made sure it matched uh, the atom world, which is pretty cool. So we essentially have two different tests written for the same function, and one is already acting as documentation for us. And just to show you this, I'm just going to delete the D off world and save it. Let's go back to our terminal and hit mix test. And look at that, our doc test failed. So that's really cool. It's running our documentation as a test. I think that's really cool. So we'll be diving into tests in much greater detail later in this course. I just wanted to give a little bit of an overview. Now, one last mix command I wanna show you for this video is, um, open up your terminal or pull your terminal back up is mix help. And this lists out all the commands and features we have with mix. You'll notice some that we've already used in this video and many more like mix run, which will run the current application. And we'll touch more on these later on in the course as we go along. And there you have it, like a quick look at Mix and Elixir. We covered creating projects, understanding file types, managing dependencies, viewing the documentation of functions and modules, testing and using the interactive shell. These are all crucial commands as we build Elixir projects and I'll see you in the next video.